Hey everybody, it's Pastor Brandon, and welcome to this week's Waypoint Student Ministry interview. Today, we are blessed with the presence of Gabe. Say hello, Gabe. Hi. So, we are in a new series, right, called Ewangelion, right? Have you ever heard the word before? Uh, yeah, I've heard the word, and I hadn't, I hadn't been quite sure what it meant before you sent me a video on it. <laughs> yeah, but I've heard it in sermons before. And, yeah. Yeah, so, and I, I kind of got the implication from context. Gotcha. Uh, the closest I ever heard of that word, actually, prior to that video I showed with you, and I think I've heard a little bit in like other sermons in Christian circles, uh, was Evangelion, the anime. And yeah. so I know there's a lot of like biblical references and things like that. So that's the closest I ever got to it. Um, and, and that's even where we get the word evangelical, evangelists. Um, I don't know where the V came from, but if we looked into deeper into the studies, I guess we could figure out that out. But uh, the other word for Ewangelion is gospel, right? And you know what gospel means, correct? Yeah. And so where have you heard of the definition or the meaning of the gospel? Well, definitely from people who have talked to me about the Bible. My dad, definitely. Oh. He's, taught me, he's told me about the meaning of the word gospel and just also pastors and sermons, things like that. Nice. I remember, I think I first heard, like, I'll, I'll hear the gospel. Um, and usually when you hear the word gospel, then you hear what it means, the good mm -hmm. news. And there's books that are called the Gospels, right, in the New Testament of the Bible. Because um, all of them are just different takes of the good news. Which at first glance, I thought they were just telling the same story over and over. But if you look through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can see that there's somewhat different perspectives, right? And that's even what, like, uh, crime investigators and police officers and, you know, detectives, what they'll do is when they get... Um, people to talk about what happened I'm, the words escaping me what's the word like uh eyewitness accounts yeah. i feel like there's another word for it that it's yeah. just going over my head but when they do that they compare the stories and if they're extremely accurate to one another you know something's up that's just a made up you know thing because everyone can experience something slightly different both despite you both being in the same place um, despite you witnessing the same things what may be important to you or what you may remember from this interview will be different from what they remember, from what I will remember, right? right? I know when I listen back to these audios for editing the video or some podcast stuff I'm working on, I'm like, I totally forgot that was said and done. Sometimes it can be a little scary. It's like, oh my gosh, my memory's not as good as I, I think it to be, right? <laughs> um, and so why do you think it's important for us to get well-versed in the understanding of the good news, the gospel, and what that means? Well, I think it's, it's important to get in verse because... Like you said, there's a lot of different perspectives of what happened in the Gospels. You know, what, what, what was going on with Jesus and the disciples. A lot of stories like that. Mm -hmm. And it's important to get those different perspectives, especially on the important events. Because sometimes those, the people that wrote those Gospels, they could have forgotten something that, that could have been really important to the story. Or something that could have added itself to the story you know like something there was there and you can see it through the gospels if you read all four of them you can see that there's like a lot of important details that the other ones missed mm -hmm. and yeah all of them. they so you know and if you put it together you can really get this grand scheme of what jesus did and there's even that's just scratching the surface can you imagine just things jesus did and he said don't write that right <laughs> or the holy spirit was like no 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 don't don't write that down Right. It's very intentional for the people in the moment. Right. So, for example, it's like the live experience for like concerts or performances versus that home experience. Yeah. At home, you'll probably get different angles of the shot, high definition or whatever. But being there, the sound is different. Being there, the experience is different. There's different things that you go through, the camaraderie, the whatever. Right. The sitting down, like just the atmosphere, the setup that you won't capture from your home theater or at home. And so we can only get so much of an understanding of what went down in Jesus' life with the Gospels. But uh, I believe through God, through the Holy Spirit, we can get a better idea than what we're limited to today, correct? Yeah. So for example, the videos I sent you, so the video I sent you in the article, like that helped broaden your understanding, right? So what are some things that stood out to you when you watched the video from the Bible Project which they're a source I use a lot when I'm studying or diving deeper in Scripture, the Bible Project they're on YouTube, and then Got Questions, which is another great resource if you have any questions, biblical questions, or you want answers, right? They're really great people to also look into. They quote their Scriptures and stuff. 
So what was some stuff that stood out to you? Well, some stuff that stood out to me was they definitely mentioned the use of the word gospel. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like lost its meaning as just the four scriptures, but it's become like a broader sense of like just the story of Jesus in general. Mm -hmm. And in the video, it kind of just narrows it down to what it really meant and like what you really should be looking at when you hear when you hear the word gospel. And I think that was really good so people can have the understanding of what the word means because it's a very important word mm -hmm. in terms of like how you can understand the story of Jesus and what he did, you know? Yeah, and it's there's this great statement I heard a long time ago. I don't remember who exactly said it, but I've heard other people quote it. They say, be careful how you live because you're the only Bible that people will read, right? You probably may have heard someone reference that like, you know, make sure you're behaving, make sure you're doing this. And you probably have those friends or family members like, what are you doing? Christians don't do that, right? Oh, I thought you were a Christian. And that can kind of be discouraging. But even as Christians, we're human, right? We make mistakes and we're influenced by other things too. And the good news, right? What is the good news? And who does it apply for? I was actually having this conversation with my wife is, I feel like some people believe the good news or the gospel only applies to the non-believer. And once you're a Christian, now you're, which I get it, you're held to a higher standard. But I feel like there's no room for the gospel. And then there's some people who are, believe that walk around pompous, like the gospel is only meant for them and not the non-believer. Do you have any opinion or perspectives on that? Well, yeah, obviously the gospel isn't just meant for a specific type of people. It's meant <laughs> for everybody to understand the word of Jesus. And yeah, Christians are held to a higher standard. So if you're caught doing something that obviously the Bible wouldn't support or God would look down on you, would look down upon you for doing, then obviously people will look at you and they'll say like, what are you doing as a Christian? Mm -hmm. And obviously it's really, it's really discouraging as a Christian if you've done something to like that higher standard being like cast down upon you as a punishment, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, and so there's this, term called grace that gets thrown around and i feel like similar to gospel i feel like the word grace uh we use it so much where it kind of loses its meaning um and so like some people they walk around thinking oh i'm covered by the grace of god i don't have to worry about it and it's like that's not how you should live right you you should it's because of how the gospel how the good news how the evangelion impacted your life that you should be motivated to do the right things, right? How has the good news influenced you, uh, maybe change your perspective, the what you've done, or how you behave? How has it influenced you? Well, obviously, it's influenced me to view things in a sort of different perspective. So when I hear things on politics, for example, there's a lot of political things going on in this world. I can see it through a, bi a biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the good news, what it shared with me, is that if you have to see things through a perspective that is of what the Bible teaches you and what the gospel teaches you. So when like for example the politics, you're gonna you're gonna think of that in a biblical sense, you know. Like what what the what the scriptures teach you and what the good news teaches you. Yeah. I have a I have a friend that he was he's one of those people who tends to have debates with others on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And he was having a debate with a a person that he thought was his friend, right? They they thought they're on equal standing and it seemed pretty good from my perspective. I don't know how other people may have felt. But then when he brought up like, hey man, like that like for a person who seems to be a Christian, why why do you have this certain stance? And that person got infuriated. It's like, this is why, you know, like like keep religion out of it. This is why I hate the church, blah, blah, blah. Like it was a very like emotional response. And then my friend felt really bad and it's like, oh my gosh, like I didn't mean to you know, poke something to bring this out because he cares for him. He's a Christian. He he didn't mean to make this person lash out well, to the point where the guy unfriended him. And then he messaged him like, hey, man, like, I'm sorry if I offended you. Like, that's not that wasn't my goal. I was just genuinely curious. And we haven't seen this guy in a while. So it was more of like he thought he was still on that same same stance. And then people try to keep religion or beliefs out of politics but I don't, I'm not so sure about that. You know what I'm saying? Because if God is everything and he's involved in everything, who are us to say, okay, you know, God, you only get this portion of my life. The good news only applies to this portion of my life. All this, stay away from it, Jesus. You know, do you have an opinion on that? Are like people kind of like yeah, segregating definitely. their beliefs? Yeah, because I, I was reading something the other day and it said something. If you don't care about politics, politics will care about you. Mm. So 
if you if the politics will care about you, you're forced to have to have a perspective on it. And it's unfortunate, but that's how it works. So if you want to keep a grounded level on politics, I believe that you have to also have that biblical perspective and what the Bible teaches you. But not just pick and choose what you want to talk about. You have to read through the entire thing mm -hmm. because the Bible has different perspectives on things. And that's why you should read through it and what, and take it as the gospel, but also take it as a basis. You know what I mean? Yeah, a foundation, something to build upon. Um, I remember growing up when I was like your age and stuff, I some stuff that came to mind was people would say the Bible contradicts itself, so I'm not a Christian. Like, oh, the Bible condones this like rape or all these other things. And I'm like, what? And I read these stories. I'm like, just because it's mentioned in the Bible doesn't mean the Bible says do it. It was talking about how imperfect humans are. It talks about what happens when you have hate, when you're raised in a certain environment, when you're influenced by certain things. That's their culture. And God was saying no to this or no to that, right? Like the whole anti-hero sermon series that we just finished up was talking about people who had misconceptions of the good news or of God and, and how to go about it. So as a teenager, right? How important do you think, per, you know, understanding different perspectives are? Because you live in a different age than I did. You know, you the internet is right in your fingertips all the time. I had a flip phone. I had like I had to type numbers to do that type of tech stuff. I didn't have such access to these things to be constantly influenced from the outside wor world. So, how have you traversed through it? What are some tips or advice for others watching? So, what I've noticed through like teenagers from what they do when they browse the internet and they try to form a political like ideology for themselves. They, they kind of, when they see something that convinces them, I f I've been victim to this too. When I see something that convinces them, they follow it. Mm. So like, for example, you're going to see something that like you disagree with and you're going to see someone like proving that thing. Right. Or, like, you know, you're like, man, yes, they disagree with that too. And they did it so eloquently. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, you're going to follow that really quickly. You're going to hop on that. Right. But what I think is important for the teenagers to do is that you need to find, you need to find what really like what really is involved, and what you did because like you can't just be so quick to hop on it, yeah, and just form your just form your ideology from yourself. You have to form it through multiple perspectives and of course opinions. So yeah, like I I, I notice that a lot. And yeah, like, yeah, and I support it. I totally believe. Even you've heard me say it to you guys and those who are listening who've uh, been able to be here for, before COVID. We, I, I'll be like, hey, take what I say with a grain of salt, search it up yourself, right? And I'll challenge you guys to just read it, you know, because I don't want to just teach you theology. I don't want to just teach you certain things. I want to teach you how to go about things, how to process, how to be a thinker, how to challenge, how to do your research, right? Uh, to then form your argument, to form your belief, because people are going to challenge you. People are going to come after you and come against you. And the gospel is a core element to our Christianity, to who we are. It's a core basis, but it seems like the pro-life, pro-choice debate is become the main basis. It seems like um, do's and don'ts have become the main basis of Christianity, right? Rather, our opinions on drinking or opinions on homosexuality matter more than what the good news is really about. And it's for the homosexual. It's for the racist. The gospel is not limited to us good people, or which none of us are really good. It's not limited to us believers or non-believers. It's for everyone. Hey, there's a God who loves you, who wants to just wreck your world for the best, who genuinely wants to have a relationship with you. Jesus died on the cross for you. And as we continue this series, as I interview other students and other people, as um, you hear these other sermons, like the first one was more about the prophecies, right? And how Jesus was fulfilling these prophecies of the good news. It wasn't just that Jesus did something. I feel like we don't talk much about, hey, the Jewish is like sacred texts and their stuff. Talk about things that the Messiah is going to do. And Jesus hits them, hits these beats. So with kind of one of my final questions for you is, What's your thoughts on that? Like hearing about the prophecies in Isaiah versus, you know, Jesus meeting those prophecies. I feel like, you know, the Jewish people have obviously don't, they obviously don't believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, they still believe in the Old Testament. But like, it's weird because you can see the Messiah right in your face. The thing that Isaiah <laughs> like, prophesied. And these people still didn't believe it. A lot of them didn't believe it. They had him. They, they they don't believe it to this day, 2,000 years later. It's like, wild. Yeah. 
and like that it's it's crazy to think about because he did hit those beats if you read the old testament what isaiah prophesied about you will see that like he hit those beats and mm -hmm. people then and people it, jewish <laughs> islamic people they, they don't see that and they still don't think jesus is who is the messiah yeah they treat him as just a prophet yeah you know that are just a teacher I've had some conversations with Islamic people and even some Jewish people, and they're like, yeah, Jesus existed. Like, he was real. He was a good prophet. I was like, I'm like huh? And when I went to Israel, oh, my gosh, it was wild because it's like, this is all in front of you. You're walking on these things, and it's just insane. But it just shows, like, you know, unfortunately not everyone's going to understand the truth. Some people are very stubborn, and some people, I don't even know. Like, there's just these things that prevent them from receiving the good news unfortunately and the enemy's working hard at that and we just got to guard ourselves and be careful um but with that being said is there any final things you want to tell the audience get off your chest conversate um before we end this interview no I don't think not so. at all yeah. all right well gabe thank you so much i had actually a really good time talking with you it was a really good conversation hopefully this blessed you guys encouraged you challenged you right we don't just want to make pat on your back we want to challenge the way you think we want to challenge the way you think and how you believe and what you do and what you go about. But uh, Gabe, thank you. Everybody, have a great, wonderful day, and God bless.